What's up, Dragon Brood? We're gonna be playing some vampires today, mostly because we did this a while back, but I wanted to try some different cards in it to see if it's changed a bit as we've kind of progressed the season. And I think it really has. All right, so here we wanted to kind of just run down all the vampires we're gonna be messing with and uh, just go from there, because there's there's a lot. So we're gonna start with Voldaren Epicure. Not a surprise, it's in a bunch of vampire lists. It deals damage and makes us some blood tokens. And we're gonna care a lot about blood tokens because we're gonna be playing Voldaren Bloodcaster here. And this actually allows us to make blood tokens every time a creature dies. Then if we have five or more, we can turn this into a 3-3, three, three, and then we start turning those blood tokens into bats. We're going to play Vran, Executioner, Thane, because if we have creatures die, then we get to drain the opponent for two life. And it's going to be pretty easy to do with Bartolome del Presidio, because he can sacrifice things. This is another reason we want to play a bunch of those blood tokens, because we can also sacrifice those to him, which is actually pretty nice. So we're not going to be too upset about that. And then we're going to play... Blood Tithe Harvester, because again, we're making a bunch of blood tokens, and if we have a bunch, this works even better. And then a card I don't remember if we played in our last list or not is going to be Sanguine Evangelist. This is good because it makes an extra bat, which is great, can help if we want more things to sacrifice, but additionally, it just gives us a way to pump all of our creatures when we attack, which is actually going to be real strong. And this is where I want to let y'all have a quick reminder about CoolStuffInc.com. CoolStuffInc.com is a proud sponsor of this channel. And you can show your support while getting 5% off your entire order by using promo code DRAGON at checkout. Need singles for constructed or kitchen table play? Looking to pick up sealed product or the latest in magic accessories? We've got you covered. CoolStuffInc.com is the place for all your Magic the Gathering needs. And support this channel by using promo code DRAGON at checkout. CoolStuffInc.com. Cool stuff in stock. All right, picking back up on this list, we are going to be playing some Markov Baron because it should be easy to play with the madness cost because, well, we are able to use these blood tokens and discard this, so it should be pretty nice. And we're going to get play two Preacher of the Schism. This card's actually starting to show up in a few lists just because of the death touch, but it has nice upside. We're going to play a copy of Edgar Charmed Groom to pump our team. And, you know, if a board sweeper happens, maybe we get to make some extra vampires. We're also going to give Vito a look here because, well, why not, right? We're playing a bunch of things that we could sacrifice. There's a chance we actually get to use the upside on this. And we're going to try Roaming Throne out. We do have a lot of triggered abilities in here. There's a chance this does a lot. And we started with two. We might play three and only play three Bartolome since it's also a legend. But we'll see how it works out as we go through this video. If you want the full deck list, it will be at the end of the video, like always. Or you can go down in the description below, look for the blue arrows, and take it to our Moxfield link where you can see this deck list and a whole bunch of other cool stuff we've already played throughout this season. For now, though, let's go see if this new mix of vampires can still hold up on the ladder. Okay. Uh, this is going to come into play taps. This is a. Uh, uh, all right, we go first. Let's keep it. I think I'm just going to play this, though. In case I get, like, Blood Tithe Harvester or something here. All right, I didn't, so it didn't really matter. But let's go here. Was going to play the Bloodcaster, but decided I would pass on that. Maybe just play Evangelist next turn. Then Bloodcaster Epicure or something like that, maybe. We'll see. Ew, this will be some reanimator fun. Because that's the only thing that ever plays that these days. Alright. They got blood letters. Good to know. I think we're just going to go here and attack. They do have four permanents, so they could, if they have the uh, squirming emergence. Oh, they don't. Maybe that's not what they're doing here. Yeah, oh, they could copy our veto at some point. That would be sad. Um, hmm. Do I need all this land? I probably don't, honestly. As I say that, I'm going to regret it as soon as I do it, but okay. I also could have just discarded, right? But truthfully, I think I'm going to want that. don't know that to be totally true, but I feel like we may need to get rid of two things. They might sweep the board here, get us a bunch of blood tokens, and leave us with the bat, sadly. I 
All right, we're in great shape then. That didn't hurt nearly as much as it could have. Oh, they're just discarding their whole hand. They were like, these are trash. Oh, it was a lot of land. Uh, if we attack with everything, we can't activate this though. We need one more. Dang it. Oh, well, this does a point. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay, I guess it does anyway. I guess. Never mind. I thought it was going to be one short for some reason. Yeah, opponent said GG's. Well, that was an uneventful first one. Okay. This is probably fine. We just keep this. All right, Cavern of Souls on the vampires. All right. I guess I'm going to go Bartolome here. I mean, because they're not going to be able to cut down if I want to sacrifice things, so that's fine. They might kill it now, though. That seems fine. We can totally live with that. We go here. And here. And I'm gonna keep attacking. That's mildly annoying. But we will attack with just this guy. They block, we sacrifice. Cast it, tapping one, two, yep. That worked out. And then, in the turn. I mean, I guess I could have sacrificed to kill it and then attacked for four. Would have probably been more efficient there. I got too cute. All right, I'm just going to take the one. Not going to put our Markov Baron at risk. They probably didn't have anything. It turns out they didn't, but you never know. All right, going to attack. All right, we're at 21. Oh, really? That's all they're doing? Okay, yeah, not blocking. There's no reason to put anything at risk there. Sure, you have an Obnixilus. Sounds great. Yep. Yeah, sure. I don't even need the land. I <laughs> think that's fine. Uh, let's make another blood token. Since we have a whole lot of vampires right now. And I may just activate this creature land and attack with all of it at the opponent, right? Because they kind of have to block Bartolome, so sure. I'm just going to ignore those other dudes. Wait, can I not? Oh, no, I don't. I can't. Uh-oh. That is a problem. Uh, interestingly, I could sacrifice, make a blood token, sacrifice, make a blood token. That's eh, kind of a inefficient. Okay. How do I want it? Maybe I do want to attack into the opponent's stuff. All right, let's send two here. One here, that at the opponent. Eh, I guess some combination like that works. I don't know, they're just going to let all the other things die? Alright, cool, I'm down for it. I ain't even mad at that at all. Not worth the effort. Sure.
End the turn. Okay. What you got going on here? That doesn't bother us. The worst thing would have been if they'd have had, like, Gix's command there. We would have got wrecked. This is fine. Yeah, no blocks. Make a blood token. All right. Uh, well. A little quirky because we still can't activate this dude. I think we're just going to do this. Markov Baron sounds good. And uh, we make one of these into a bat. Opponent blocks three and then takes three, four, five, six, seven. And we just pump the rest. Yeah, so they have to block Bartolome here. They don't even have a choice. And if I leave these back, then we pump... Yeah, I think this is all we're doing. Maybe I'm supposed to attack with everything there? I don't know. Well, yeah, opponent's definitely dead then. Alright. Just going through the motions here. Oh, that's cute. Alright. Then sack a bat. And that's nine. Yeah. Okay. Well, that wasn't too difficult. All right. This is kind of a typical vampire expected start. Uh, vampire. There we go. Yeah, this is just Epicure, Harvester, Harvester, Epicure. <laughs> it's kind of how that's going to go, I think. No point in putting Bartolome out there right now in case there is some removal. We'll let it eat up some of these harvesters or something first. Ooh, oh. You don't say. Um. Alright. I'm gonna take a chance here. Man. I, I'm not. I'm not. I was gonna play Bartolome and then like maybe get Roaming Thrown and then that way I'd have at least one of these to make more blood tokens next turn but I'm like ah if I just play Harvester if they play like a 6-6 six, six, we could kill it here and yeah exactly it just makes more sense alright now we can play Bartolome because even if they have a thing like Chomp or whatever we have a billion things we could sacrifice All right, another big hammer skull. Deck, we have tried to draw lots of lands here. What are you doing to us? Seriously. I would have to sack one, two, three, four, five, six. All right. We do what we got to do, I guess. <laughs> like, opponent's like, nah, not having it, sir. <laughs> Uh, okay. I should draw there, to be honest. Because if I get a tap land off the top, it's going to suck. But I kind of wanted to see... Ooh, that's not great. That's not good for us at all. That's absolutely terrible. Ooh. Yep. All right. Well, they got us. Unless we get, like exactly well no we could get right right would help but uh, that's probably about all we can do thing doesn't come back with trample so that's good bone horde dracosaur yeah all right they got us they hit their stuff i did not missing a land there was bad for two turns we'll keep it i guess Alright, let's see what we can do. 
Dang it, you're late to the party, friend. You're late to the party. But that's kind of okay. We could play that tap, still play the Bloodcaster next turn, and that's still mostly fine. Not spectacular, but still mostly. All right. I mean, you at least get to see our hand, though we're going to do our part to just kill the bat and play the Bloodcaster anyway. We just don't get stuff the way we wanted to. Actually, we do still get stuff the way we wanted to. That's nice. Because they took something else. Alright. Play another bat. Nope, it's a Liliana. When I win, you're telling me what you know about the Sure. Sounds good. More blood tokens. Haven't you ever heard of personal space? Ooh, do I want to play throne? All right, let's see what they got for removal. Thought about playing Edgar, because then if they just killed Edgar, we start getting 1-1s, one -ones, but I don't know. Figured I might draw something. They could have a cool ability. Might matter. Well, they're not going to kill the Roaming Throne now, so that's good. Now it's just, what do we discard? Drop it. Guess it has to be this. Much as I would like the life gain and all that good stuff. Uh, can't really play it, so we'll just pass. No Glissa, please, thanks. Okay, there was not a Glissa. That's good news. Alright, so we'll try to attack into Liliana. And then I'm going to go ahead and play this first. I mean, if they have a removal card, they kill Edgar, that's fine. Like, we knew the risk. Yep. But Edgar at least can come back, so if they have removal, would rather it be that than these duders. And if they don't have another Liliana, they don't get rid of our roaming throne. Ah, uh, but they did. Okay. Well, we tried. We did what we could. Alright, so we get a body. We play this. We play this. In the turn. Alright. We're going to have to discard Vito. That's tough. But I felt it was better to get the other bodies out there. Soren. Okay. You have a Soren. Sure. Or do they not even want to discard those last cards? Looks like they don't. This is interesting. Okay. How do we feel about that? So we send... Oh, boy. Well, this deals one... Oh, one to each opponent, not to Planeswalkers. Hmm. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to send... This into Sorn. This into Liliana. And then we will let them decide how they want to deal with this. Sounds good. Oh, crap. I meant to sacrifice a thing. I was... Oh, I was thinking... Ah, crap. Oh, well. Damn it. I actually generally... I, I misclicked... I had my finger over the thing and I clicked it when I didn't mean to. Yeah, I meant to sacrifice the, the blood tokens so I could kill the lifelinker. Ah... Uh, that sucked. Oh well, did it to myself. Gotta play out of it now. I mean, good news, Edgar's coming back next turn. So there's that. And their Liliana, if they have another one, doesn't do anything because we just sacrifice a 1-1. One, one. Alright, what do you have? A deep cavern bat. Yeah, well, good news is we don't have anything that we're concerned about losing. Hey, they did have another Liliana. Look at that. I'll have this fight finished Who knew? Brunch. Yeah, sure. I've always hated crowds. Nice. 
nice. You love to see it. So this is excellent, actually. So let's get rid of this. Actually. Hmm. Yeah, because this will become a 3-3. Three, three. Yeah, sure. All right. Uh, sack this one that can attack. Then play this, which makes a fifth blood token. Uh, get rid of one of these. And then we now will attack this, this, actually, here, here, these two here. And we'll get rid of all the Planeswalkery shenanigans. I actually attacked one too many. I <laughs> only need to send two into each one, but whatever. If you do that, they're just going to let them die and they'll block the other 2-2 two -two that gets through to them anyway. So kind of the end, same result. Exactly. They block a 2-2. Two -two. So yeah, the combat would have looked no different whether I attacked them or not. Alright. We got things locked and loaded. Shielded. Sure. Good thing we have a bunch of flyers. Yep. Yeah, that was one where we would have just gotten rid of shield. I mean, I guess either or. We get yeah, we get rid of shield and just attack with everything. Even if they're blocking little two twos or whatever, it's still worth it. Yeah, I suppose we'll keep this. I can't really see a reason not to. That makes it an even easier decision. Do do do. All right. Well, hey, at least the lands are coming up the way we need them to. All right. So what you got? Duelist. Okay. Feel like we need to go ahead and kill that duder. So let's get rid of that. They're going to save it? Nope. All right. Attack for one. Play this guy. All right, end the turn. Another duelist, okay. And an NT, sure. Wow. Uh, that's not a lot of great stuff there. Go ahead and get rid of that, I suppose. And, uh, oh, can't play that one to get rid of the other one. That's, that's a problem. Hmm. I mean, I guess I could attack, see if they trade. I doubt they will. I mean, I'd have to sack both my things, but I would take that trade. <laughs> if they were willing to give it. Alright. Inti gets to attack. Put a counter on itself. Ooh. Oh. They're playing O'Hare talk. What? This is not the deck I thought it was at all. What kind of shenanigans are these? They are in the lab. All right. Duelist. Oh, deck, you're killing us. Dang it. Don't even have a creature land. I get to, I got nothing going on here. I don't even know if I want to kill NT. I. Ugh. This is so not good. Alright, I'm going to get rid of this. I just hate myself later. Alright, we might as well attack with both because we're not blocking. Alright, deck, we need something. A, a Blood Tithe Harvester, maybe? The... 
bloodcaster, like anything, like something. But like this many lands is terrible. This is definitely not what we want. All right. Oh no. <laughs> All right, well, they're gonna play it or lose it. So at least it didn't get to attack us. That's the good news. You know what? Hey, this this is fine. I will take this right now. And then we'll get rid of that. Maybe, you know what? That's wrong. I think I'm supposed to get rid of Inti there first. Honestly. Because then they just get access to fewer cards. Like, we could take some damage. We're 13. I mean, because we're going to take five or six here anyway at a minimum. So we should just got rid of Inti, taking whatever damage from the, the Thundering Raiju. And that would have made more sense. Though, two, three, four. I mean, there are some combinations that if the opponent leaves themselves shields down. Oh, they're not now. Okay. I was like, that could have made a difference. Especially if it had been like a uh, Sanguine Evangelist. And then we sack that, get the extra bodies, sack those to Bartolome, and then like, boom. That could have been a thing. Still could be, actually. Because we would have seven mana. Uh, of course, it's not going to be, but it, it could have been. <laughs> uh, what do we do? What do we do? What do we do? We're only at eight now. I think we have to crack this. We have to dig. Takes away some of our options, but I don't really know what else we would do here. Edgar? All right. That's something. I mean, Edgar's an intriguing option. But I think we still end up just doing this, getting rid of Inti, which I probably should have done a couple turns ago. In all reality. Alright. What I was thinking is that there's a world where we could play Edgar, you could sack Edgar, and then during your upkeep, you'd get the 1-1, one, one, and that'd be kind of cool. Yeah, they attack here. We're not blocking. I mean, it's like, we just go to 6, right? Yeah, not getting rid of Inti on the previous turn, I think, was, was a mistake. All right, let's see if we can find something good here. Those are choices. I mean, this is interesting, right? Because we could... Epic oh, we only have four mana left, not five. All right, I guess we take this because it's a death toucher. Could possibly keep the opponent from wanting to attack. I don't know. Pass the turn. I mean, because it is a 3-3 three, three against a 2-4 with death touch. Barring them finding something else. But even if they have, like, get lost, then they give us maps and we could sack the maps. Oh, Angel Fire Ignition. Okay, well, that's a card. <laughs> yeah, that's a thing. Uh, we just drew too many lands to even be remotely competitive here. Yeah, we just take it. If we don't get a removal card for that guy, we die next turn anyway. Oh, they have a pump spell. All right, cool. Yeah, we didn't do anything that game. Okay, let's keep it. Yep, this is an okay start. Depending on what we're up against, of course. Oh, boy. Alright, well, looks like we're going to have to try really hard to race. Don't know if we're going to get there. But, we're going to give it our best effort. The good old college try, as they say. Alright, end the turn. Glimpse, yep. I'm going to get rid of this planes in our hand. Uh, double roaming throne. I don't know if that does much here. 
I mean, Sunfall is still Sunfall, you know? But they have to have another white. But they might already have it, truthfully. They did not. All right, Vorinclex. A little bit of a nuisance, but we can get a Vorinclex out of the way, and then that's game. So, that, uh... Wow, very uneventful and did not go the way I thought it was going to go. Huh. Yeah, that was a weird one. Ooh, we have to mulligan this one. This doesn't do anything on its own. We'll keep this. Uh, ooh, get rid of one bloodcaster? Because, like, this is removal, this block stuff, you know. All right. Don't know if it's going to matter here, realistically. I mean, if they get off to a good start, this could be tough. But they didn't play a creature there, so that's good news, because a lot of their stuff is hasty there. I mean, oh, Crescendo. Wasn't even a, what you called? The, uh, usually you see a rage there. All right. Harvester dead. Alright, Swiss Spear. Now kill the Harvester. Well, I'm not blocking. That obviously says there's a rage there now, so you might as well hit me with it. Yeah, exactly. Like, no, nobody's surprised there. Okay, let's go Vampire. Now, I can't kill the Swift Spear. Hmm. I guess I gotta do this for the moment and hope for the best. I mean, we could kill the chick. Just to make sure nothing crazy happens, I guess. As much as I'd like to do that with the Bloodcaster out, like, you know. Just gotta do what we gotta do to stay alive here. Or a brass. That dude's a problem. Like, for real, for real. Um, He also first strikes, which we don't like. Uh, I mean, we could I ganjo him, which is something. Hmm. I'd have to take a point, but I could do this, and then if they attack... Uh, that wouldn't quite work, though. Hmm. Alright. I'm kind of gambling on them not targeting Bartolome before they attack. Because otherwise, I'm better off just playing the Epicure, letting it die, and, you know. But alright. I'm just taking a gamble here. I know there's a chance it may not work. Riches. Why is he a thing? No blocks. Hopefully they don't have any more rages left. Okay, they don't. Alright, so that worked out. Okay. So now we can at least breathe a little bit easier for a second. We attack, we get a 1-1, one, one, right? Attacking the player with the most life. Alright, let's try. I mean, because we know there's no more rages or whatever there, so that's not a thing. And then we'll crack this, see if we can find something else worth playing. Ooh, that's good for next turn, though. Alright, I don't think we die here, even if they have a rage. This is mostly fine. Oh, no. Magmatic Galleon. Definitely was not planning on that being a thing. Oh, I should have sacked that to the Bartolome, too. That's a mistake. That was just lazy play. Ooh, boy. Boy, oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. Yeah, that's a, that's a big deal. Mmm. 
Yeah, I definitely should have done that. Because then I at least have the option of this being like a 3-2, then it would have been a 4-3, and if I wanted to sack the token, I could have made it bigger. Well, we can't block with it anyway now, so it's all fine and good. Let's block here and go to... I mean, we're not going to gain life. We're just going to take three. All right. We're at five. Nice. Okay. And we have enough mana to do all the things. Got to take a point, but it's probably worth it. Uh, let's sack and get rid of... I don't know if I want to get rid of Bridges or the, the Galleon, actually. Bridges first strikes. I mean... Hmm. This is tough. All right. I mean, the reason I'm doing this is that it does take away an attacker, right? They have to crew before they do anything else. Uh, no attacks. And then if they don't deal with stuff, then we do have Ride of Oblivion to get rid of something else next turn. But being at three is not necessarily pleasant. And this needs to be crewed for two. All right. So we block here. We block here. Uh, sack this. All right. Okay. Also good. Though going to three sucks, but... That, that might be our only real option here. Uh, Jeez. Don't love it, but we do what we gotta do, I guess. Go to three. Oh, this hurts. I need my life linkers bad. Um, yeah, just gotta be this. All right, gonna attack? I'm trying to think how we die here outside of a burn spell, but I don't think we do. I mean, if they just top deck, we're dead, so can't worry about that. I My mean, guess is a world where Squee would be a problem. All right, well, we go to one. They bottomed it, so we at least have some hope, even if only temporarily. Uh, I'm going to crack this and see if we can find some, because we're almost out of time. I mean, sure. Man, I don't know where we're going to get time from, but I think it's got to be that, because it at least makes a lifelink token. If that's just a land, we can win. If it's a burn spell, we're dead. If it's an epicure, we're dead. <laughs> like, there's... Okay, he doesn't have haste or anything. So that's fine. And we can't use the rights unless we get a non-damaged white source here. We did not. Oh, gosh. Okay. This is so tense for no good reason right now. <laughs> Uh, attack. Attacks are at four. Three. They have to. They have to block everything. They have to block Bartolome here, right? We sack two things. Actually, we don't even have to. We could just sack Epicure, and then Epicure makes a. Okay, that's fine. Just double checking. I think because if they block anything else, they're dead. This is literally it. This is the turn. If the opponent top decks and gets us, then they get us. Yep. That's fine. Yep. Uh, we'll sack. And we'll sack. Alright. And we're just going to hope the opponent doesn't get there. 
We're at one. A billion things kill us. Haste things, whatever. You name it. Probably should have left the bat back, honestly. I mean, we got a block. Oh, okay. Well, if they got a blood token or a uh, rage, we're dead anyway. All right. Well, I guess we're dead. I'm assuming it's a rage, right? And we just die exactly at zero. Oh, okay. Well, that doesn't give it trample or anything. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, boy, did we survive that? Wow. Oh, that's brutal. Oh. Oh. Yeah, y'all, so this is tough. You know, like, while the deck did what we wanted it to do, I don't think it needs, like, don't get me wrong, Roaming Throne is nice, really, with the Sanguine Evangelist. That's, like, the best thing it does. We discovered as, you know, it doesn't work with Vran, so that's a thing. Uh, it... It's pretty good with when you're making the blood tokens, so you can trigger the blood caster faster. But realistically, if those roaming thrones were like an Anja, that would be another way you could just win, right? Drain your opponent's life total or keep yours higher. And Anja's a four or five also, just a big body. Uh, so if y'all don't know what card I'm talking about, it's this here, uh, Maid of Honor. She's a four mana, four or five, comes into play, or when you have a vampire, Come into play, you actually get to make a blood token, and then you can sack blood tokens, drain your opponent for two. That's another thing. Or, or, they could also be thrill seekers. And I think, oh, do, 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 do. I think Voldaren Thrill Seeker would also be potentially better. So, if you cut the three roaming thrones, you could probably play like two, and honestly, maybe even one Vito. Uh, like, Vito was okay, but not great. I would be fine. Cutting a veto, adding another Edgar, so you have at least two Edgars to pump your team, right? Because that's good. And then I would probably do something like this. Cut veto, add an Edgar, cut the Roaming Thrones, add like two Thrill Seekers and an Anja. And that's probably what it would look like if I were to do it. Because Thrill Seekers sometimes also just give you a way to kill a Planeswalker or whatever just quickly. Like you play it, sack a thing, boom. Or you get a big attack in. And then you play this afterwards. And, like, you could play this on Bartolome after it's already, like, a 5 or a 6. And just kill the opponent on the turn you draw this. You know what I mean? So, this makes a little more sense to me with the way things are. Uh, don't be wrong. I like Roaming Throne. There's some situations where you can do some fun stuff. But it's usually with the Evangelist making a bunch of bats and whatever else. Without that, it didn't feel as exciting as I wanted it to be, unfortunately. So, this is probably the list I would put up. But four Valdaren Epicure, four Bloodcaster, two Vran, three Bartolome, four Rite of Oblivion, four Blood Tithe Harvester, four Sanguine Evangelist, four Markov Baron, two Priest, uh, Preacher of the Schism, two Valdaren Thrill Seeker, two Edgar, one Vito, one Anja. And honestly, you could probably even make an argument that the Vito could be removed for either another Thrill Seeker or another Preacher of the Schism. So if you don't have Vitos, feel free to play one of the three drops. I think that would be fine. There is a thing on lands, though. There was a lot of times where I wanted, like, one more creature land. And I think with us further reducing the cost of the deck, now just four things that cost four, I'm okay playing a couple more restless lands, I think. It's a little bit dicey. Don't get me wrong. I, I don't think it's, like, what I would call perfectly ideal. But at the same time, I think we just need just a little bit extra to be able to uh, punch through. And maybe it's Bivouac that we need to go with because it can put counters on itself. I mean, there, there, I don't know. There's a choice. Maybe we play one of each, the black, white, the red, white, and the red, black one. And I mean, I do like that the restless one actually does drain for two. So that could be a real thing. So maybe we do that. But something like that. But I think you need, we only had one. I think you need two or three in a lot of cases. So if you are dealing with the sweepers and whatever, you do have a couple of other options. But yeah, I'm not going to list off all the lands because we're playing a bunch of ones and threes or whatever to make it work. So yeah, vampires. Uh, you know, I think Marty Vampires is fine. Does it need to be three colors? Not necessarily, but you do get a lot of value from being in three colors right now. And you have the lands to be able to do it. So it's hard to justify not doing it, right? And the, if there was anything else, I would say it could use a little more removal. Because right now you basically have eight removal cards. But... You also have the Preacher of the Schism, which is like Death Touch, so it's kind of removal. 
so we'll call it 10. You sometimes need a little more than that, but even if not, this is at least serviceable the way it is if you're looking to play vampires. But again, I kind of wanted the Roaming Throne to be better than it was, and it just... For this deck, I don't think it was the right card, unfortunately. And now for today's card spotlight, we're going to talk about Indulgent Patrician. Mostly because this is a card that I don't think people know also isn't bulk, right? It's an uncommon, don't be wrong, so you're not expecting it to be a bunch, but I've seen these as high as 75 cents in places, usually not below 50 cents. So if you're looking to uh, maybe fill out some orders, check out what's on people's buy list sometimes. You'd be surprised what you can find in commons and uncommons that are worth a little bit more than you expect out of each set. And it's probably just because it's a vampire and we've had vampires reprinted recently. So that's going to push up the value of a lot of cards that haven't been in print for a while. Because this is from uh, Magic, I think, 2021. So it hasn't been around for a couple of years. I kind of get why people are wanting to pick these up. Especially during the pandemic, people didn't buy as much paper. So another one that might be worth a little more in your boxes than you knew. And if you're into vampires, you might like flying creatures. If you do, check out this angel deck we had that was mostly bant colors, but is really, really powerful. Well, that's all I have you for now. We'll see you next time.